Ah, uh, you're using another app. Ah, yeah. okay. No problem with me. Okay, ma'am. Let's start. Okay, our class. Okay. Okay. So let me start with our topic for today, which is HTML, and then after my discussion, Sir Burhan will follow to discuss tables and frames. So let me share my slide. Wait lang. I have a problem now because I can't see everyone. Wait, I'll just be using a mouse. Okay, so let's start. Let me share my screen. Can you see my slide now? Yes, po, ma'am. All right. So just be turning off my video so that we could focus on the discussion. Uh, probably uh, most of you have encountered using HTML. Just to refresh all of us with this topic because our um, program is about web design and development and this is the tool that we're going to use for uh, creating our website which is html so html stands for hypertext markup language so it is the uh, only known uh, language that the browser uh, would understand or interpret otherwise um, um, you can you, you 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 cannot load a website uh, if you're not using HTML. So the topic includes how the web works, what is a web page, uh, how do we write our first HTML page. So we will be talking about hyperlinks, images, and formatting. What are headings and paragraph? We'll, talk, we'll be talking about doc type declaration. The head section, which includes a title, meta script, meta script, and style. We'll also talk about uh, the body section. We'll uh, also discuss hyperlinks, images, and lists. So web works. So we all know that whenever we um, go to a website, we need to provide a URL. A URL is Uniform Resource Locator. That is the address that we type in into the uh, browser. Uh, previously, the address um, in in the previous um, in the history of internet, those are numbers or the IP addresses. But now uh, we have we just have to type the specific uh, URL. Let's say for example, you want to Google.com, so you just have to type Google.com, and then uh, that would that is considered as a page request, and it will be sent to a server, and this server wants the search of that particular website is existing it will respond to us also through the browser where we type in our uh, website and then if it's not available there will be an error message that the website is not uh, available all websites have their corresponding web pages so this is uh, what we design the web pages so web pages are text files containing the HTML. So again, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So this includes a notation for the description of our document. 
Okay? Similar to a word. So, we use what we call tags or elements in writing our code. So, whenever you write your code, you save that as .htm or .html. So, that's the difference between the other files. Otherwise, if it's not HTML or HTML, you cannot, uh, uh, the browser cannot load it because it doesn't understand any other language. In writing our code, text, editor, text editors that are available can be Notepad, Notepad++, PSPad, or later on, we'll be using the Visual Studio. Okay? So, other HTML editors such as Visual Studio, the Microsoft Front Page, Macromedia, Dreamweaver, Netscape Composer, and again, the Microsoft Word and the Visual Studio. These editors are considered WYSIWYG. Does anybody know what is WYSIWYG? Anybody? Can I see an answer in our chat box? What is W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G? Anybody? There, there are plenty of answers. So what you see is what you get. So these editors provides us of a coding and at the same time, we can easily uh, see what we are already writing from our script or from our code. Okay, so let's now talk about HTML basic. So let's start with text, images, tables, and forms. Although the tables and forms will later be discussed by Sir Burhan or Professor Burhan. Okay, so for the stuff our HTML, again, we call our code or the composition of the code that we use are called elements or tags. These elements or tags usually has a beginning and an end. So for us to determine which is the beginning or the beginning tag, or the e beginning element, or the ending tag, uh, this is how it looks like. So you use the less than and greater than sign, and then indicate the name of that particular element. And the entire structure of HTML starts with this. And the ending tag, or the ending element, usually have a slash at the end. Okay, So this is the beginning, and this is the end. Um, other elements or tags can be nested. So when we say nesting, you can have uh, a tag or element within another element or tag, such as this one. So the entire HTML composed of a head a body, and a body. Okay, um, You cannot put this head outside the HTML, neither the body. So this is how you nest the elements inside. So there are certain sequence that must be followed. There are cases that also uh, elements that needs to have attributes. So similar to this, we have the image tag or the IMG tag, which uh, allows us to display images. Okay, and in this example, or in this tag, it requires us to have the source or the SRC property because Otherwise, we cannot display the image if we don't have the source, okay? And then another property that we can use is the logo, or rather the alt, I'm sorry. The alt is an alternative tag whenever that particular image is not loading. Or probably you can put some description to that, and that is where you put this text as the alt. Uh, in this example, uh, it provides a logo text. And then also, remember that HTML would have two main sections, which I mentioned a while ago, which is the head and the body. So it is within that HTML uh, element or tag. Again, in our formatting, so this uh, increased readability and faci facilitate debugging. Um, actually, you can write your code in one line, but again, we... We don't recommend that because it doesn't allow us to read the entire code. So what we do is we put our code in every block and we, we always start that in every line, okay? So that it will be more readable and again, in case that we encounter some error, it will be easy for us to see where the error came from. 
And uh, nonetheless, the browser doesn't recognize uh, white spaces. So uh, it's better for us to write our code in blocks, okay, rather than putting only spaces since spaces or white spaces are being ignored by uh, the browser. So this is an example of an HTML page. So let's say, for example, you write this code, doc type, uh, and test that HTML. So let's try to do this in actual. Uh, let me stop sharing first. Again, we're going to use um, Visual Studio Code. So if you have your Visual Studio, if you do not have yet your Visual Studio Code, you can use Notepad, but we suggest that you download Visual Studio Code. So where can you find the Visual Studio Code? You can go to this site. Let me share this to you. Visual Studio Code is free, so you will not have a problem with the licensing. Let me share this. Can you see the tab now? Or the site? So I just, uh, I will just type in the, the link in our, our chat box there. So you can go to this site. This is visualstudio.com downloads. So again, reminder that before downloading, you need to check first your operating system. Uh, it should match your OS. So if you're using Windows, so you, you download Windows. If you're using Mac, you download uh, Visual Studio for Mac so that you won't have a problem with compatibility. Okay? And of course, if you're using uh, Linux, so this is the Linux version for the Visual Studio Code. So given that you already have your Visual Studio Code, you can now start writing your code. And let's do that. So let me share my uh, Visual Studio Code. And let's start writing our program. A while. First, remove some. Okay, I have here some examples. share my screen again. Can you now see my screen? Participants from Cambodia, uh, do you understand 
Am I too fast? Just tell me if I'm too fast. Yeah, teacher, I understand. I'm okay. Am I too fast? No. It's okay. Hello. Can you see now the visual to the phone? Yeah, teacher, I see. Hello. I can't see you. I'm sorry. I do not. Uh, can you respond through Ozo? Because I cannot. Uh, seems to see if you understand me. Hello, ma'am. You can type OK if you understand to the, text, uh, to the message box. I want you to follow what I'm be uh, what I'm demonstrating so that you could see from your end the actual output. So again, let me share my entire screen. Probably there is a lo uh, a delay. I'm just seeing now the responses. All right. So let me share again. So again, this is the Visual Studio Code. So I created a folder so that all of my samples later on will be in one folder. This is one basic example of an HTML. Can you now see it? Can somebody respond through audio so that I could know if you could see my Kita na po, ma'am. Hello. No. <laughs> Ma'am, we can see can that. Can Sir Burhan? <laughs> yes, sir. We can see this, the screen. Can you see yes. what I'm showing? I see the chair. I hope you respond. Yes, we can see the screen. No. You can proceed, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Probably it's my audio. Hello, hello. Can you now respond again? Yes, see. There. I'm so sorry. There's a problem with my speaker. Okay. So again, this is the HTML. So this is the beginning tag and this is the ending tag. This is the head and this is the body. This is an entire body. So I have here uh, a comment. So this is an example of a comment tag. Okay, so this is how we put comment. Later on, we'll be talking about that. This is an example of another element or tag, which is uh, a heading. Uh, we have several headings, so we can also have uh, H1 in, up to H6. H1 has the highest, or rather the biggest uh, font size as compared with the rest from H2 to H6. I have here another example of an element, which is P. P is for paragraph. Within my paragraph, I have another element or tag called M. M is for emphasize. Emphasize is similar to italic. So where your text is uh, placed uh, in an italic uh, style. Okay. So if you want to view this example, so we just have to uh, save this and then try to open this in our uh, browser. So what I would do is to open the folder where my code is located. So this is where it is located. And then I can immediately open this to the browser. So you can just double click this. And then uh, I'm sorry, it use uh, the default is Microsoft Edge, but you can open it in Google Chrome. 
So this is a sample in Google Chrome. Although we can open also that in uh, Microsoft Edge. We test that again. We can use Microsoft Edge. So this is uh, the two uh, output. So this is Google Chrome and this is Microsoft Edge. Okay. You would see that... Uh, um, they both are using the same um, style, okay? Uh, always remember that browsers sometimes have different default uh, styling in displaying our uh, output. So let me go back to our slide. I cannot see you. <laughs> so you're here. Let me share again my uh, slide. All right, let me share this. Okay, so from what we have seen, this similar. So this has a title. So the title is coming up in uh, at the top of the browser or in that. Then we also have, uh, we had the paragraph a while ago. So again, you have opening tag and you have closing. This should be here. Then you have the HTML header. So this part is the header. And this part is the body. The one with the body element or that. My slide is distorted. Nevertheless, okay. So these are some other tags. So we have the hyperlink tag, which is an A tag. So this is sometimes referred to as A. But this is known as hyperlink. So this is uh, a tag wherein... You can, uh, this is just a simple text, but whenever you hover over that text and then click on it, it will lead you to another website. But uh, the link will be uh, depending on if it's uh, an external link or if it is within your um, page. Okay, there are different settings for the hyperlink. Then we also have the image tag, which is IMG. Again, there are some requirements for this type of tag. So for the hyperlink, you need to have an href property or attribute because you need to link that to this text. So for example, if this is the text, then you want to link something to that. So you provide the, the link. So either again, it, if it is an external or if it is within the, the same page. Later on, we're going to talk about that. For the image tag, again, you need to provide a source and um, it's up to you if you want to have an alternative text for that. And then for some text formatting, just like in my example, we have the M for emphasize. Additional to that, if you want to have the text proceeding to the next uh, line, you can use the bang. Uh, in this example, you would notice that the hyperlink tag has a beginning tag and a closing tag. Okay. While for the uh, image tag, you would notice that there is a slash already here. So meaning to say that the image is what we call a self-closing tag. Okay, so that's another, uh, a self-closing tag uh, doesn't need to have a closing tag similar to this one. So it, it just, just automatically closes. Uh, similar to the break. Um, but somehow the browser also accepts break statement or break uh, uh, elements without this slash without uh, the break being uh, self-closing it uh, some browsers accept br only without this slash okay another example of text formatting tag is this one the strong the strong is similar to bold okay so it will make the text more thick as compared with the 
others. So let's um, have this example. So in this example, it uses a hyperlink, an image, and uh, text formatting. So let's have that. Let me show that in the Visual Studio Code. So that we could uh, get to uh, right. All right. So in our body, we already have here some example, the paragraph. We can add um, something like a hyperlink. That's what we mentioned. So let's say each ref. Let's say uh, we want this hyperlink to go to google.com. Probably let's change that. Um, let's say usd.edu.ph. Let me complete the URL. Let me also include the HTTPS. And then inside uh, USD, the text would be USD website. Okay. And then let's try another paragraph. Say University of Santa Tomas. Let's put some text formatting. Let's say strong. And let's place the ending tag after the text of University of Santa Tomas. And we already have here the M, what else? Yeah, let's have this one. So let's save this and then let's try to have our um, example. So this is our output and this is our text. This is our code. Let me... There. So this is our code. This is our sample. So let's refresh this. There. So we now have our H1, which is sample, we now have here our hyperlink. So whenever you put your mouse over this hyperlink, you would notice that it becomes a hand. Okay, so this is now a hyperlink. So when I click on this, it will lead me to the USD website. So when I click on it, it will open the University of Santo Tomas website. So this is the one. But unfortunately, it loads the website also in this page. So now the sample, the test one that HTML is no longer here. So I just, I have to uh, click the back so that I'll be, uh, I will return to my sample. If you want this site to be open into another page or tab, we can add something here. Um, we can, um, what do you think is the element or the property that we can add so that it, this will be open to another um, tab or page? Anybody who is familiar with this? Can I see a raise of hands? Or probably something on the chat. Anybody on? Okay, so let's go back to what I'm showing. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? 
Okay. So, in this property, we can add a property <coughs> called target. And then, we can place a blank element, underscore blank, so that whenever you click on this link, it will open a new tab. Let's try that. So, let's save this. And then, let's load this again. So, when you click on this, it will, uh, this page will no longer be overwritten. So, it's not overwritten because it's trying to call this particular site. It will just reopen another site or another tab. So, let's try that. So, this time, if you notice that this is the sample that we're doing and then when we click on this link, it now opens another tab so that we could see the website of UST. University of Santo Tomas. All right. So that is the difference between what we have a while ago prior to this uh, blank tab. And then for our paragraph, you would see here that we have two paragraphs. The first one is with the text University of Santo Tomas, which is this one, which is uh, have also a text formatting which is strong. That's why it is thicker compared to this paragraph, which is uh, a bit lighter in its style. Okay, so that is the use of the text formatting or of the bold um, tag. And then again, we use the M here, the M tag. So that's why this text is in uh, italic. Uh, by the way, this lorem ipsum is just an example. So if you're trying to create or simulate some text, uh, probably some of you already knows this, you can open a Word document. Let me just share for those of you who are having a hard time getting an article and then typing for just an example. So you can do this. So equal sign and type lorem. And then you should have two uh, numeric value inside. The first value would be the number of paragraphs. And then the second is the number of uh, sentences for each paragraph. So let's try that. There. I have four paragraphs. One, two, three, and then four. For each paragraph, I have uh, three sentences each. So this is just an example. So probably you might want to uh, use this. Yeah, so we can add it here. And create another paragraph and then paste the text inside. So let's save this. And then let's... Uh, okay, so now I have three paragraphs already. The one, the first paragraph is the title, which is University of Santa Tomas. This is the second paragraph. And this is the third paragraph. So I, I'm just having an example here. Let's now go back to our slide. Uh, we haven't included an image. So later on, I'll just go back adding an image tag. So let me just first share again the slide. This is how it looks like. So a hyperlink, an image, and a formatting text. All right. For the image, yeah, you have here, you can not only for image, but you can have additional attributes for, uh, for other tags, such as this one. For the image, not only... D as uh, one of the attribute uh, IDs for identification. So probably later on, in when you are trying to create uh, a style, when we discuss the CSS, and you might want to put a, a styling for this particular tag, it can uh, trigger or it can manage to check on the ID. Okay, and then of course the required attribute for the image which is the source and another attribute is again the ad again uh, we can apply 
the following elements or rather attributes in all, in all other uh, tags or elements such as ID, style, class, and title. So again, the ID is a unique is unique in the document. Um, it will be, although HTML won't really give you an error message whenever you have an error, but probably you will have a difficulty whenever you assign similar ID to two different tags or elements. So be mindful that I unique. Okay. Uh, content of the title attribute is displayed as a hint. So whenever you use the title uh, to a particular tag or L, for example, you, you use that for uh, a paragraph. So whenever you cover that, so probably it would provide a title for that. It's like, um, I forgot the term, a tooltip. Yeah, that's the, the term. It's a tooltip. It's used to describe... Uh, that particular um, text or an image probably or whatever uh, element that you have included a title into, okay? And then again, some elements have obligatory attributes, just like this one, the source. So if you're using an image element, it's obligatory that you have a source. Otherwise, it will uh, load any picture or image. Again, for headings and paragraphs, uh, a while ago in our example, we have already used them. Again, heading tags are from H1 to H6. So again, H1 has the uh, bigger, biggest uh, font compared to H6. So from H1 to H6, it decreases in the size. Okay? Again, we have used the paragraph. You already know that paragraph has a beginning and a closing tag. Additional to that, we have the div and the span. So what is the difference between a div and a span? So if you're going to use a div, uh, div element or tag, it's similar to a paragraph because whenever you do that, it will just um, provide you another break. Okay? And also, usually the div element or tag is used in... Uh, responsive type of, of website. They sometimes avoid already using tables because uh, it will just create a scrolling effect. Unlike with div, uh, div tag or element, it will fit into the screen. Okay, so let's have this example. So in this example, it has three headings, heading one, two, and three, and then it has two paragraphs and a div. So this will show you uh, this uh, output. So this is heading one. This is subheading two. So this is the code. So this is subheading two. Subheading three. This is subheading three. And these are the two paragraphs. This is the first paragraph. So this is the output. This is the second paragraph. And the last one is the style. So in this style, uh, the div rather, promotes or it includes an attribute of style but this is not required so it's up to you if you want to include an attribute called style okay so this is one way of putting a style or effect in your uh, element so in this case this div although again this is not a requirement because you can do the stuff in your um, CSS which next meeting we will be discussing that so in this example, um, this div, this is the text, this is a div, and then we place a background, which is a color sky blue. That's why it's like highlighted. Okay, let's try that. I will now be including um, an image probably. So let me just prepare an image so that I'll be retrieving the image from the same folder so that I will not have a problem uh, accessing it. So let's try this one. Here's my folder. Let's minimize the name. 
Okay, so let's now try this. So let me open again my Visual Studio Code and the output. Alright, so let's say for example, I'll be placing uh, an image here after the second paragraph. So I'll be using the IMG and then I'll get the source. And then since in my folder, I have here, I have placed here an image. So this is how the image looks like there. I'll be using that in the website. So I'll just, since they are uh, both on the same folder, so I'll just, I don't need to put uh, an, uh, an actual address. So I just have to put the file name, which is hci.jpg. And then I can also include an alt. Say, X sample uh, image. And then I'll be closing it. Then after the image, I can include a div, probably. So in the div, again, you can provide a style. Let's just use uh, the one in the example. It uses a background, color. Let's say I'll be using. So good thing for Visual Studio because it provides us of um, some examples of uh, colors and some intelligence there and let's put some text here this is a sample if like this one so let's save this and let's try to refresh our page again there so this is now our page it looks like this is the, the div let us um, move this div over here so that we could see the actual div so let me save that again and then let's try to refresh this there so this is the div tab I provided a background color of aqua and this is the second paragraph and this is the image Right. Okay, let's go back to our slide again. Do you have any questions so far? Do you have questions so far? None. Thank you. Let's proceed. Okay. Let's talk about document structure in them. It is important to have the correct vision and attitude towards HTML. Take note that HTML is only about structure, not the appearance. So browsers tolerate invalid HTML code and parse errors. We, will, we should be the one to correct the error. Because again, HTML only interprets our code. Okay, it doesn't have a compiler similar to other programming language. Okay, uh, there are instances that we want our page or our website to be a valid uh, website. So in that case, we need to use what we call the document type definition. Uh, if we're going to use that, you need to use this doc type declaration because that's one of the requirements for the browsers. Uh, for the triple w consortium to validate if your website is a valid website or not if it is well formed or not so it tells the web browser what type is the serve code and what are the possible version using this uh, document type definition you can refer to this link to check on the different um, valid uh, doc type declaration Okay, so there are a list of possible doc types. So these are just examples. Okay. So let's now focus to the head and the body section. So again, the, the head section contains information that doesn't show directly on our viewable page. Uh, again, you can start 
the head section right after the doc type. Although in our example, you notice that we did not include any doc type, but we can still manage to load our website. Okay, probably in our uh, uh, project, we can include the doc type declaration. Again, the head section begins with a beginning head tag and a closing head or tag. It's mandatory to have a single title. Again, the title is appearing whenever you hover your tab, okay, to uh, display the title. Um, because if you notice, sometimes you have several tags open and you cannot determine what <laughs> page is that. Okay, so with the using with the use of the title tag, you'll easily determine uh, what uh, page are you looking for. Okay, additional to that, you can also add in in your head section the meta tag, the script, the style, and again the comments. So a head can include the title, similar to this one. Again, you can fi find that uh, at the top of the uh, browser, okay, or the tab, okay, or this one, it's in the top of the tab. Search engines and people rely on titles. You can also include a meta tag, so the meta tag describes the content contained within the page. So there are several usage of the meta. You can use that for uh, to provide description for your page. You can also provide keywords. Okay, whenever uh, a search, let's say you will be deploying already your website and then uh, you want your website to also be included in the series of the search. Okay, so you have to provide keywords. You can also include, okay, you can also uh, have this um, HTTP equivalent. Also, under the head section, you can also include an, an element called script. Uh, this time, when, when you use the script element, this is uh, makes your page um, dynamic already because you will try to write codes already that uh, provides uh, certain actions, okay? So that's the only time that you use script whenever you want to use JavaScript, VBScript, uh, which is supported by HTML. Okay, or the J script. Take note that this scripting language uh, will be interpreted. Uh, let's say, for example, you want to display something um, for several times. You cannot do that for HTML. Uh, actually, you can do that, but you have to um, type it in several times. But if you will be writing a code, let's say you will be using a, a loop, a for loop or a while loop, you, you have to use this scripting uh, language, okay, for you to be able to perform that type of action. And take note that JavaScript is not Java because Java is uh, a different language. It's a programming language, unlike uh, this. These are scripting languages, which are also uh, interpreted only, okay? Let's say, for example, this one. You want to display something on the screen but not directly so you use the script okay the script tag can be placed in your head section as well as in your body but in this case when you use the script element in the head this is where you declare uh, in this example we declared a function called say hello okay and our script element provides us of the type attribute which is we have to place text slash javascript for it to determine that you're right, you're trying to write a code. And in the body, we also have used script element as well. Uh, the type also is text slash JavaScript. But this time, we just triggered the function say hello. Uh, this is where you just call this function say hello. In the function say hello in this example, tries to print something on the screen. Although you can write directly from the body, but we just want to simulate uh, writing on the screen using a function called say hello. Okay, so in this part, since it's inside, it, it cannot call directly uh, an element such as this one, the paragraph. 
So you have to use certain functions similar to this one or command, document that right. So it will be allowed to display something on the screen. All right. So let's try to do that. Let's try to make one for ourselves. So let me share my entire screen. I hope you are also following what I'm doing so that you'll be experiencing already what I have here. Okay, so let's try to put um, a title first. So a title, let's say this is uh, basic HTML. Okay, so that's our title. When we save this and we, and we try to refresh this, if you would notice that whenever I hover, since I have plenty of tabs, sorry about that, I have many things to do. So when I hover, look, there, there's the title, basic HTML, okay? And then another one, if we want to use uh, another, which is the script, Inside our script, I will just be putting an attribute called type. It should be text. Oops, sorry. It should be enclosed in parent in double quote slash JavaScript. And then inside this uh, script element, I'll try to create a function. I'll just do the example. And then inside this function, you'll have more of this. Uh, so we'll be using the command document that right. Then let's try to use the paragraph tag. Oops. Closing tag. Hello, everyone. Yeah. And then I'll try to call this here. So prior to displaying, um, this this was the former example. So let's say prior to displaying this a paragraph, the hyperlink, I want to display hello everyone here, okay, after the sample. So I'll be trying to put the script here for the calling because you cannot directly call this say hello using the script element in the body so we will now be calling uh, the, the function say hello but try to have to include here a type and then also provide text slash javascript yeah. so let's try Saving this and let's try to reload the sample. There. So this is now hello everyone. So this is the triggering line number 15 triggers for us to call this particular function. Okay. And then right after it displays hello everyone, it will proceed to the next block, which is the first one is a hyperlink. For the USD website, another paragraph for the text, another paragraph for this, a div style, another paragraph, and then the image. All right. Question so far? Do you have any question? None. Okay, let me share again my slide. Are you learning? Can I see? Number one at the chat box, if you're learning. Thank you so much. All right, so let's proceed. All right, so this is just another example. Uh, but this time, 
Uh, we can also include in our um, head section what we call the style element or tag. Uh, this is uh, what we call an embedded styling for CSS. You're trying to provide a design factor in your HTML by using the style element or tag. So in this case, the type now is text slash CSS. And then you provide here some um, of the elements that you want to uh, configure for your design. So how do this styling um, adapt to the body? So in this example, what we have here is in the body, we have paragraph and a span element. So in the styling, Whenever it sees a paragraph because of the P, style would be to make the font size to 12 points and a line height of 12 points as well. And another styling in this example is that whenever it encounters a paragraph, colon first letter signifies that the first letter in that particular paragraph will have a font size incremented to 200%. That's why when you see this actual output, the letter S in the tiles demo in the body has a bigger font as compared with the other text, okay, because of this styling. Font size is 200%. And then another style that we have provided in the style uh, tag is the span. So whenever it sees in the body a span element similar to this one, it, uh, it will have a text transformation wherein all the text will be written in uppercase. So if you would notice that in the span, the only uppercase letter is letter T. The rest is small. But when we check on the output, all the letters are already in uppercase. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, let's now provide, again, this is what we call an embedded style. A while ago, if you remember, we have another style, and that is one. This is what we call an inline style, okay? That is also considered as a CSS uh, styling, but this is called inline. The one with the style element is called embedded. And Next meeting, we will be talking about uh, CSS, which is a separate file from your HTML, which is much better nowadays. Okay, so let's try this. Let me open again my Visual Studio in our output so that we could try that. Can you see the screen now? Open my Visual Studio and the out. All right. So in this example, we'll try to use an embed style. Let me comment first on our script. Or probably we can um, just place it there. Let's just include the style here. Let's say you have the style. Inside our style, we'll include an attribute called type, similar to what we have in the script. But the argument or the value would be text slash CSS. And then inside your style element, let's say paragraph. Uh, hold a selector and then after the colon you provide the uh, the description or the styling already so inside curly braces we now provide the uh, the style let's say you want the color 
to be uh, green. I, we don't, sorry, we do not use colon here. We use colon inside our um, our property in the value. Okay, so that is the separator between the the description and the value. And this is the selector that we want. Okay. Besides paragraph, let's say H1. You want to put some styling in H1. So for your H1, let's say you will need you will need to use or you, you will uh, change also the color. There are several um attributes that you can choose from let's say i want this to be in red you can also use for the color um hexadecimal value you can use font size let's try to i uh, know not the font size uh font style let's use Let's say Garamon. Garamon. Uh, if you have several styling for a particular selector, you separate them by semicolon. Okay, in this part, whenever it sees H1 in our body, it will apply a font style Garamon and turn it into a red uh, color. Uh, in this example, whenever it sees a paragraph, the text color would be green. We can also set a font size if we want. Let's say you want this to be in uh, 16 point. Again, you put double quote for the value and then, I'm oh, sorry, semicolon as our separator. Uh, we should use colons. Yeah. Let's try this one. So in this case, H1 sample will now be Garamon and then color red. While for our paragraph, so this paragraph will uh, ah, will have 16 point and then we'll have a color green as the text. Similar also to this one. Okay. So let's try this again. So save. And then let's try to run this. Hmm? Wait, it it did not apply. Why is that? Probably I'm using the wrong property. Let's use some code. Let's try that again. Check what's happening. Mine is not working. Let me test that. While it works with the other but the color is not okay. i'll just show you something regarding color reference mm. 
if you're having difficulty choosing a color, there are a lot of uh, color reference over the internet for our guide. So you can check on this uh, color picker from W3 School. Let me try one before I show it to you. The styling is uh, working on my end. I don't know a while ago why it doesn't work. Probably the color is not matching. Mama, I can see your slide. I'm sorry? If I, can I can see, see slide presentation. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Wait now. I'm testing it. Can see it now. Um, yeah, they can. It's here. So I added uh, something similar to this one. Let me save that. Let's test this. The color is not working, but this one, the font size for the first letter already incremented. So this is a paragraph, so it incremented the font size to 200%. As for the H1, H1 is sample. It did not take effect. Let's try another font style or font family probably. Font family. Let's use, instead of Garamond, let's use Arial. The color is not working. Why? Let's save this. Let's try this again. Ah, there. The color is not the one working, but the rest of the styling is taking effect. Look, H1 font family is Arial. So once it sees that, it applies. The same thing for the paragraph. But the color, I'm not sure probably but this is a an, an actual color so again you can reference to this one for checking on the color scheme you can go to this site there you can have reference to uh, each particular color that you want this is the hexadecimal value for that let's try this one i'm not so sure what is it that working maybe we let me try that again ah yeah yeah thank you sir <laughs> we should provide semicolon even if it's at the end that's why probably it's not working let's try that again okay um, i don't think so sir still doesn't work. Yes. Um, remove lang po yung double quotation. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Ah, yes. So, in price of the double quote. Okay, let's try that again. There. So, for the H1, it now applies the red color. So, there, in the aerial. As for the paragraph, now it's purple. <laughs> This is a paragraph. This is also a paragraph. This is also a paragraph. Okay. So, uh, this is an inline styling. So, instead of having it here, you can remove it and then put it inside your style. So, you can put the selector and then put the settings inside. Of course, you have to remove this already. Because since uh, you're already providing the styling in your style uh, element. Let's try to change the color. Instead of aqua, let's try blue. Let's save this and then let's run it again. There. 
we can also change the the font background color is blue we probably can choose a color say yellow save because it's not readable there so it's now more readable as compared to the previous one okay let's now try to continue our slide are we still good mentioned this already the comment so again that the comment tag uh, begins with a less than exclamation two hyphen or tags or dash rather and you terminate it with two dash and then greater than so whenever you place a comment in your code it will not be uh, it will just be disregarded by the browser it's just like putting some notes into your code Okay. Let's now proceed to the body. So in the body section, um, can place also um, comments to that, not only for the head. You can provide text formatting. Actually, we have did that already. Um, we have used strong. An alternative for strong is the B element, which is bold. Another alternative is the italize, which is also similar with, uh, which is uh, emphasize. We have U for the underline. We have soup for superscript, similar to this one. We have sub for subscript. We have strong again, similar to bold, and M for italize. We have preformatted text. When you place text inside the preformatted element or tag, if it spans in three lines, it would also have three lines in the uh, page. A quote, it's like putting uh, double quotes inside your text. And then we have del or deleted text, or sometimes it's called strike through, like having a text with a line. Okay. Let's have this example. So in this example, it uses H1, so that's the notice. Then a paragraph which uses an M or uh, emphasize. And this is the preformatted. So the preformatted, since if you did not use pre element here, this text, next paragraph, colon, preformatted will just be on the same line. But since we use pre here, element, this word preformatted now proceeds to the next line because this is how you want it to be place then another one is let's see okay we'll have another example for that later now this is the hyperlink so a while ago we have used hyperlink to connect it to an external uh link right in this example there are several usage of the hyperlink tag that's just one linking an external file you can also link another page. So if you have several pages, you can link uh, another HTML file to that. You can also link an HTML file that is in another folder or in another directory. So if it is in a parent directory, so the notation would be to put two dots slash and then the file name. Okay. And then you can also uh, link to another document if it's if that document is in another folder similar to this one let's say the cat.html is in the folder stuff so it has to look uh, for it in that particular uh, directory also we have uh, this is the one we tried a while ago uh, linking to an external uh, external website and then placing a target okay so that it won't uh, leave uh, for a while i just have to connect my charger i have a low battery 
or leg. So going back, there's my presentation. All right, here. So another way or another use of the hyperlink besides uh, getting into another website, or another website, you can also use the hyperlink to, uh, to an email address. Let's say you want to directly email somebody so it will pop up uh, uh, a dialog box for uh, emailing somebody so by using only the a element or the hyperlink tab so you can put if and then put here mail to colon and then provide already the specific email address and then the subject of your email and then the body of your email as well you can also use hyperlink for um, connecting to an image or using an image as a hyperlink. So in this case, it has an image, and then this image, whenever it is clicked, it will lead to this uh, page, applynow.html. Also, you can use the hyperlink in um, calling to a document, similar to this one. From the root directory or parent directory, it will proceed to the English uh, folder, and then it will look for uh, this particular file, which is index.html. Also, a hyperlink can be used from linking one section to another within the same page. So, in this example, let's say you have provided an ID to your H2. You call your uh, H2 as section 1. So, that is the one you, say you assign as an ID for H2. So, whenever it looks for this particular hyperlink uh, the, uh, when it clicks on the go to introduction it will proceed to this particular section it also will uh, simulate this one uh, another one is if it is in another page it's similar to this but it's in another so in this example uh, it's in the file chapter 3 that html and it will look for the section 3.1.1 so this 3.1 ID is assigned to this particular div. Okay. So assuming that this hyperlink is in another file, and then again, whenever you click on this text, go to section 3.1.1, it will go to this file, chapter3.html, and look for this div. Okay, so that's the difference between these two. So this is the example. Let's say, for example, these are different hyperlinks. So this fill our form, we'll just call the form.html. This is a parent directory. It will call for the parent.html. The catalog is inside a subfolder called staff. BASD link here will uh, link to an external website. This please report bugs here will try to email this uh, link. And then this image it's also a hyperlink. It will lead you to apply now that HTML, and this part will be from the uh, from the parent directory, a subfolder English, and then we'll look for the document index.html. Okay, so this is for the sectioning. This is the one that we're going to try. So assuming that this is uh, in one page alone, then you have these three. Uh, hyperlink whenever you click on the introduction so when we check a code when you click on the introduction hyperlink it will look for the id section which is here so look on this introduction it will just scroll up and go to this section okay similarly to this some background so it will just scroll down and go to this some background uh, h2 and another one, which is the project history, when you click on that, again, it will go up and then look for that, okay? Now, we've already talked about the image. So, for the image tag, again, you can have several attributes, the source, the alt. You can also set the height and the width. You can set the height and the width using the number of pixels. And then you can also set a border if you want. 
or if you do not want to have a border, actually by default, it doesn't have a border, so the value is zero. Other miscellaneous tags includes the horizontal rule. So it, this is similar to align. Uh, this center and font uh, tags are already deprecated. Whenever we use the term deprecated, these elements or tag are no uh, uh, of use. It's still working, although we're not already using it since uh, styling is already done in the CSS. Therefore, deprecated. So this is an example of that. So this is the horizontal rule. This is a text that is being centered using the center tag. This font tree uh, uses this uh, font uh, element or tag. And this font plus four uses also the font styling, but it increases in size and also adopts a color uh, scheme. Uh, but before we proceed to the list, let's first proceed to an actual example. So let me stop presenting again. Let me share the entire screen. So let me open my Visual Studio Code and our output, which is here. All right. So let's try to create another file. So inside this folder, I want to create a new file. So I can right click from this folder and use new file. And then I could type, let's say I'll have test to that each time. Okay. So I'll be using this for us to simulate uh, the external link. Um, but I'm, I will still be using also this test one. So let me first go to this file. So in this section, let's try to put an attribute to our paragraph. Let's say um, this one, I'll assign an ID. Excuse me. So this P... Um, uh, the University of Santo Tomas. So let's say I'll, I'll start with this one. I'll assign an ID here equal to um, section one, for example. Okay. And then the other paragraph, which is this one, so that we'll get to experience the scrolling effect. I'll try this paragraph. Uh, and then we have here already. This, let's say this paragraph is section 2. And it, this is the one. This paragraph is part of this. Let's say, for example, they're uh, in both in the same uh, line. Let's use this part now. So this paragraph, I'll assign another ID. Let's call this as section 2. Replacing the image in between them so that we'll get to experience the scrolling effect as I mentioned since our image is uh, wide. All right. So let's say we'll have a menu on the top. Let's say uh, here after the script, I put some H1. Let's say H2. Okay, this is an introduction. Introduction. And in the introduction, I'll make this as a hyperlink. A, href. And I'll be calling that ID. Let's say I'll be calling this section uh, 1 ID. So I'll be using a hashtag section 1. And then try to close the hyperlink. Okay. And then I'll have another H2. Okay. href equal to section 2. I have to use hashtag. Um, introduction, let's say, over 
um, for example, history. This is an example. Let's put some additional paragraphs so that we get to feel that we have plenty of text, right? Sorry. Let's arrange the alignment. So let's do this. So let's save this and then let's try to. Yeah. So we now have here a hyperlink for the introduction, assuming that this is an introduction. Uh, let me place instead of University of St. Thomas, let's put this as an introduction. Let's put some uh, elements here. Let's say I use a horizontal rule to divide them and put a size, let's say 12 pixel, and put some image here. Let's say is let's let's just use the same image the file name is hci jpeg let's put let's sign a height a height let's say um, 30 pixel and a width of uh, probably 30 pixel as well Let's close the element. Let's place heading for the paragraph for this section, section 2. Let's say H2. This is, for example, history. Let's save and let's try. Let's refresh there. This is the horizontal rule. This one is because it's 12 pixel. It's kind of thicker. So when we click on introduction, it will just proceed to this part. Okay? But when we click on his, it will scroll and then go to this part. Okay, so let's try that. So let's click on introduction. There. So see, it scrolls up. So when we go back and click on history, it will now go to this part. So that is the use, another use of hyperlink. If you're linking a file within the same uh, page, so you can use uh, sectioning or by the use of the ID attribute and then calling it through this uh, href. You understand? So what if the file is in another text? Or in another file, rather. So let's assume, let's just, uh, I will just copy this one, this part. Here, of course, I have to make this as HTML as well. I have uh, the head, and of course, the body. And then inside my body, I have one. And then let's try uh, to make this a section 3. Okay, so let's this HTML2. If I will be displaying test 2.html, this is how it would look like. I will first remove. Uh, you would notice that when we click on the, a while ago, when we select the history, it adds up to the URL, the section where it uh, leads us to. So let's say we try test2.html. So this is test2.html. Okay, but we'll try to call this uh, within that page also here. Okay, so let's say I'll include here another link. I'll call this as external and I'll be calling this since this is in another file 
I call the test2.html hashtag section okay let's try that let's uh change this to external so let's save uh, let's make the image much uh, bigger let's change this to 50 pixel by 80 for the width so let's save that let's try this again yeah so this is how it would look like so external but we'll try to call that inside the test okay so let's change the file name here and then run it again so there so when i click on the oh wait the h2 here is not displayed for a while it has a problem ah this the file is not safe thank you sir <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> so let's refresh this again there so it's this is the link so this is the introduction this is the history and then this is the external there it loads on the same page all right that's good can i see uh five in the chat box if you're still with me and you're still learning five in the chat box five can you rate me five <laughs> Can you type five on the chat box? You don't want to put five, sir. We're happy. They are focused on <laughs> writing their codes. They're not. I just want to know if you're learning. Please. Type 5 on the chat box, please. What's happening? Why aren't you typing? <laughs> no. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I, 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 they focus. They don't want to type. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, are you still there? Can you type five, please? So that I would know if you're still with us. Kila, Nathaniel. Kindly type five on the chat box, please. I'm typing five for. Oh, there's a delay again <laughs> i can see it ah there there's a plenty of hey guys there's a delay on my end i thought you're not uh <laughs> kyla is questing to see again the code sure kyla i'll show it again display again the code for you to see open, open the out yeah so this is test one that HTML can you now see it let me hide this sharing link Again, for the paragraph, you can just simply go to your document and use the lorem ipsum um, function so that you get to have this kind of sample paragraph. All right. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll just drink water.
Hello, Victor. Hey, are you Hello, done? Victor. Are you done with this? Can you hear me now? <clears throat> All right, so let's again proceed. I will just be giving you a copy of this probably. Let me share. I think I'm on the last part of my presentation. All right. Okay, so sometimes to um, provide some enumerated list, ordered or uh, unordered list. So for ordered list, we use the OL. Uh, there are several options for the value for the enumeration for the order list. You can use numeric values. You can also use uh, letters, uh, uppercase or lowercase. You can also use, use Roman numeral, uppercase or lowercase as well. So you will be placing this type for the order list to determine what enumerated list you want or order list rather by providing it inside this type uh, attribute. If you place one, so the ordering would look like this one. But if you place, let's say, A capital, so it would look like this one. And then for small letter A, this is Roman numeral in capital, and this is uh, Roman uh, Roman numeral in small letters. So that is for ordered list. Another type is what we call the unordered list. For unordered list, uh, you have three options. You have the disk, the circle, and the square. For the disk, this is how it looks like. For the circle, this is how it looks like. And for the square, it's a square, obviously. Okay, so you just have to type it here. Uh, sorry for this. This should be C, disk. Unorder this because there are no such thing as uh, uh, ordering. Okay. Also, you can use what we call the definition DL tag. This DL tag allows us to provide a text with an associated definition. So, let's say, for example, you want to uh, list several terminologies with their corresponding definition. Inside your DL tag, you provide the terminology inside the DT tag. So it's a sub tag of your DL. And then for that particular uh, terminology, you want to place a definition. So the tag element should be DD. So this will be indented and we will... Uh, that HTML is with definition. So let's say you have another terminology called CSS and that definition is uh, at the bottom of this uh, definition of this terminal. So again, it renders without bullets and the definition is now indented. So in this example, uh, it has the ordered list to this one. So it, this is how it would look like. Since you type in one here for the type, for the unordered list, you use the disk. So this is how this would look like. And then for the definition list, you have here, let's say, HTML. And the definition is indented. So there's no bullet. Let's assume that there are still more terminologies at the bottom, which looks like this one. Okay. Other special characters that you can use, copyright, you cannot just simply put letter C and expect to have this symbol. So this is how you would uh, type it in. Ampersand copy, so this, the, this is the symbol uh, for the output. For the registered trademark, so ampersand reds, semicolon. Trademark sign, you use ampersand trade, semicolon. For symbol for the less than sign, you use ampersand LT. Greater than, ampersand GT. It has semicolon, by the way. For the ampersand symbol, you use ampersand AMP. Okay? For an empty space, single space specifically, you use ampersand MDSP. For the dash, you use M dash. Then quote, you use double quote. And then for the pound, 
British pound, this is the one pound for the euro. So you just search on for your particular country. Then you have the yen. <clears throat> this is an example for that. So this symbol uh, can be directly typed, the square bracket. But for the greater than symbol, you have to use GT. Okay. Uh, this is a space, NBSP. So there are two spaces between uh, the greater than sign and the welcome word. That's why there's an empty space here. Two empty space. And then for the rest, uh, this symbol is in numeric value. So this is 9658. So this is the 9658 character. For the 9827, that's the heart. Uh, no, that's the clover, rather. For the diamond, that is 9830. And for the heart, that is 9829. There, 9829. And for this um, musical uh, instruments, uh, uh, musical note, rather, that is for the TM, uh, it's supposed to be <laughs> this one, the, the trade. Okay. All right. Okay, let's try that. Good day, na si Ma'am. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Oh, let me share my entire screen again. <clears throat> so what we're going to try is the the list. Let's that do that here in the test two that H So let's say We'll have the order list first. Inside your order list, you're going to have certain list. Do not forget the type. And then for the order list, you have several options. One, uh, A, capital A, small a, Roman numeral I, capital, small letter I. Yeah, so those are your options. Or one, let's try one. So let's try to enumerate um, uh, some list, let's say fruits, say apple. I'll just be copying this and change the value. I'll try several. So apple, oranges, uh, say mango, pineapple. Yeah, my order list. So you have another list this time. Instead of ordered, I'll try to have an unordered list. So instead of O, I'll use UL. I'll try to put a horizontal rule here. But instead of, I'll have, let's say, five pixels. Here... I'll try to have, for the unordered list, let's say, a circle. I'll try the circle. i just use the same list, apple, oranges, mango, and pineapple. Let's try the definition list. So that's the tag DL. Inside the DL, you have uh, the DT for the term. Let's say HTML. And then for the definition, of course, we have BD. Hypertext markup language. And I'll just copy this uh, text so that it will have uh, more uh, definition just for uh, simulation purposes. Let's say I will have another terminology. Let's say uh, CSS. And I'll use speeding style sheets. There. So let's save this. And then let's test again. 
So let's first go back to this test one, and then I'll try to access test two that HTML through this external hyperlink. So click on that. Now I have this one. So I have the horizontal rule with five pixel in size. I have here my ordered list. I use one as my type. I have here my unordered list as type is a circle. Then I have here at the bottom my definition list. So I have here HTML. There. And this is the definition. And then here a term which is CSS. And then the definition is again indented. All right. So that's it. Question so far. You have questions? I'll give you a copy of the examples in our Blackboard. I will ask Sir Burhan to upload it so that you'll get to have the sample. Kaila. Is, it that, is that okay, Kaila? Any other questions to what we what I have discussed? So let me turn over the floor to Sir Burhan. Uh, for him to continue the discussion regarding tables and forms. We now have the virtual floor, Sir Burhan. Uh, thank you, Ms. Emma. <coughs> so, out my part, uh, okay, now we have learned a lot about the, uh, the elements of the HTML. My part will be covered about tables, uh, how to create table. Actually, table is important for, for web design. Uh, and then forms, okay? Yes, I share my screen. Wait. HTML tables allow web developers to arrange data into rows and columns. So there are two keys, uh, there are two elements here that we have to consider when we are creating table for our web design, for our website. So first, role and column, okay? Hopefully you know uh, what is row and what is column, okay? At the example, on the, our example, we have companies, contacts, country. This called roles, okay. And also, uh, the rest of the data are roles, are displayed in roles, okay. And also the companies and the name of the company here, uh, we call columns, okay. We call columns. So. Okay, allow me to share this one. Okay, uh, in order to create table, we need uh, uh, to use HTML elements called okay, tables, right? Tables, and also uh, what uh, we have learned, we need also closing text called table as well. Okay. All right. So we have tables and inside the table is considered data okay it's considered data so first uh, we have rows here and columns right okay columns 
we, we need to create the structure of the tables we need to create a td okay td is a for data and tr okay there are two elements here tr for row okay so of course eh, if we want to create this data we need to create a eh, tr text and with the closing text tr as well okay and also tr for the for the rest of the rows like this is it correct <laughs> like this example okay all right i'm uh, sorry uh, tr for the rows and inside the trs is td sorry because of uh, my excited here as you can see if we want to create a data first row we need tr for the rows and inside the tr we need td all right okay let's do it here okay i would like to use a uh, div for our divisions and i would like to use h1 for our title for our header i call here tables right sorry tables all right maybe html tables okay so before we start to use table we need to call uh, table text okay and then i don't know you can see my script or not okay Up. and then we need to call we need to create a role uh, for inserting for inserting data so how to create a role we use tr right and this is the first role okay after that what we will do we will create uh, a data okay let's i show this one right now we have first uh, h1 this is our heading our headline called html tables now there is nothing happen yet because we don't have a data right so we need to create first role called uh, td okay td stand for table data okay now we will we will, we will uh, input first data here maybe we can put like full name okay okay name okay after that we save now we have name here but actually tables there is a border okay uh, we have to create a border here in order to have in order to see our data as a table okay if you don't need a border we can just uh, uh, put it zero like this this is our first data and we want to put another columns uh, for the second data but in the same row uh, here we use td uh, maybe for the second data we call uh, we will use university right like this and now we can go for the third data okay uh, it's a td maybe we can use we can put our for our data like contact save so finish this is for the first row okay for the first row right and how can we create another row okay so we have to start new tr ok 
scan right new tr after that uh, start with the use by using td for our uh, first data at the second row okay okay names uh, maybe i will have i will use our frame name here okay nata na l okay this is our second data at the second row okay first data at the second row sorry and okay let's go for our the uh, university okay second data at the second row td right ah ust right ust okay save right and go for the third data of the second row td right contact number uh, uh, maybe we can use the email okay it's a nata na l k at uh, hotmail.com uh, maybe hotmail com all right ah this is now we finish for the second row and yeah, we have three data so if we want we want to add more okay let's the first way to do that yeah, just copy okay copy copy tr here like this okay and paste all right now we have uh, we have two data here so maybe i will change name to Yong Ra Mon right from CPI U okay uh, for the, his email will be ramo at hotmail.com or at gmail.com uh, okay gmail.com sorry for the mistake like this okay so if you want to add more uh, columns huh, you can go here td okay uh, maybe country right save uh, now we can add country so this one td okay the Philippines right save okay and go to the sec uh, third row okay td right cam bo cam bo yeah okay this is the example how to create role uh, how to create tables right but actually there is size for the tables okay so we can make a size with try 100 percent so 100 percent So when we make a size for 100% like this, okay, when we make our screen browser full screen like this, so the table size will follow the screen of our browser.
okay of our web browser uh, this is for the uh, uh, size for the tables okay uh, just I copy this one okay I will paste to our student group and they will forward this code to you okay like this all right huh? so this is table huh? the simple tables okay now we will go to we will go to forms okay this is the format of form okay so how can we create a form we need to start with the HTML tag called form and follow by form element okay form element like this example start tag starting tag form and inside the start in between the starting tag and ending tag of form there will be the form elements okay now uh, we will create a simple form uh, for our uh, class yeah okay how can we start to create that okay I will open the same code same file here uh, and I will choose where is the, our table I will continue my work on the tables Alright, it's okay. Maybe I will open again. Okay. Okay, now we will start with the form. Okay. Okay, form actually, uh, why we use form? We use form in a case that we want to create. Uh, we want to collect the data from the viewer. Okay, like our university. Okay. Ah, that UST there is a form like this okay where you can put your full name okay email numbers your countries and subject also message and also you provide the submit button okay this is the place the, the page or the place that you that you that viewer or user can send their data and also you can collect their data from the form okay and also with the PPIU also there is a form uh, where you can put your email your subject and also your message and end with the sending button like this okay so this element we call inputs okay all elements here we got uh, relate to the form uh, are inputs okay because we need to input data okay so uh, let's start with the simple forms here but before that I will open our file with the live server okay if you use this uh, VS code uh, you can install the extension here we call live server okay live server so it will virtual uh, the the server uh, uh, your your web browser as a server as you can see there is a ad, uh, the number of the address here okay this is a like virtual like a server okay now uh, let's go to form huh? so I would like to start with the the IV to make a division for our page and 
maybe I will break this, put the break elements to make a space between table and form. Okay, and I will start H1. Okay, for form. Okay, maybe we can call here yeah, contact form. Right. So, for the form structure, we need to start with the HTML tag form text. We call form like this. Okay, so just ignore the action. So, the action means that when you click the button, you put your uh, your destination. Eh? Maybe you need to pro you need to send this information to another page uh, to another file something like that. So uh, we will start with the first labels. Okay, uh, maybe we will collect name. Okay, first name like this. Okay, and then. We put br. We use br for break to start new line, and we will start form call input. Okay. Input types is text. Okay. And now save and let's see. Now it's coming. Okay. Ta uh, contact form first name. Okay, now we will go to an, the second form, maybe last name. Okay, or we can put like here full name. Okay, full name like this. Save and then go to br. Okay, uh, what you require for the forms? Okay, email, right. And then input like this. Okay, types here we call text. Eh? Type is a text. So just put type here. Text. Okay. Right. Now we have second form right and uh, what else uh, subject right subject okay input type also text okay Ah, you see, because we don't have br here, br. Right, subject. Right. After that, we will add a uh, text area. Okay. Text area. We need also br here. text area before text area we will say uh, message okay b uh, message right text area so this text area you can increase the space okay but maybe we can call call uh, and rows okay calls is column maybe for the columns we put uh, 30 rows 50 uh, 50 okay ah so oh 50 pixel percent i think right
is it correct? Ah, like this, okay, twenty pixel. Right, huh? Rows, column. Okay, maybe column I will put ten. Oh no, thirty. And rows is ten. Ah, now just next okay like this this is text area okay text area for for long message okay for long message and then the next one we will have button for submission okay button so we will use input Okay, input type type is submit okay now you will get the submit button here okay submit button or if you want to put your own name uh, change the name of submit you can put value Call uh, send. Okay. Send. So now the name change to the to the send button. Send button here. All right. I think this is the basic form. Okay, basic form. So I will copy this one. A screenshot of this one. And put to my student group Telegram. So, student from the PPIU, please help me to send this screen to our friend in a in your group. Okay. All right. So the next thing that I would like to add is about friend. Okay, friend, I frame especially. So, what does how does I frame works? Okay, I will show you this slide. Okay, for example, uh, I frame is used to display web page reading a web page. Okay, for example, if you need. Uh, you are some address some web address to be displayed on your web page okay we will use iframe for example i want our page we want uh, our page uh, uh, display uh, our university website okay maybe your page is like information page for con for 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 your friend to to refer the university that they want to study like this so you can use iframe and take a link uh, take a link uh, from the university that you want to to display on your page and put it on your page okay for example and another iframe uh, we can use iframe uh, to attach the map as well like here uh, uh, you uh, UST map eh? you can use iframe and then attach it on your website okay and also the Phnom Penh International University okay PPIU also you can use I will show you how to get the link eh? from from the Google map okay so first of all eh? we will uh, we will start with the div okay make uh, division okay uh, so you can say like uh, our university 
Right. As a heading type. Okay. Page one. Right. Okay. Now uh, we will call iframe. Okay. We will call iframe. So this is iframe. You can see iframe. So the elements of the iframe, uh, there there will be source and uh, sources. Source is RC here. Uh, you can uh, where you have to put the uh, link or the another web page. Okay. For example, uh, I want to I want my 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 page uh, display. Uh, university website okay so you can go to university website okay now I will take eh, this URL copy okay and go to source and eh, paste it okay now okay now we, let's see what happened to my website now we save okay we save and please wait for a while now you can see there is a, a, a USD website yes, on our page uh, but it's very small here so how what we can do we can make create uh, increase the size by using with 100% okay save wait for a while now is 100% display to our page but we need some height okay high is around maybe 400% 400 pixels sorry Okay, now you can see our page. Eh? There is uh, our university here. Okay. Ah, now 100% width eh? and also 500 pixel high, something like this. Right? Okay, now we want to put uh, like map, right? Google Maps here. So, what we will do, uh, okay, maybe we can start with the new div, okay. Now, let's go to Google Map, okay. Go, let's go to Google Map. Okay, I will type, uh, okay, you need, uh, uh, this is UST, and you can go to your map here to see the university location and uh, is it correct right is it correct can you give what number one if the cor if the this one correct right okay, okay. so how can we take this map attached to our website so we have to go to share and this to embed map okay embed map okay we have now we we'll go to embed map and at the embed map here uh, we have medium like this Okay, this is the size of our map. Okay, the size of our map. Right? So
so you can choose uh, the size of your map okay maybe here I will choose like okay medium size okay after that you can go and copy copy the HTML here sorry uh, and then copy right now I copy this code you can see there is iframe with the source and the URL of the Google map here and then you go to your page okay just paste it okay just paste it now we see what happened save okay so let's wait for a while you can see now we have Google map here see map here but uh, if you need full screen here you can just uh, adjust this value to be 100 percent okay maybe here you can say h1 uh, our university map Right now we have a uh, full screen of the maps here with the contact form like this. Okay. Right. And uh, the same thing with the uh, PPIU. So now we have the template. So we we just copy it. Okay. Copy and paste uh, so you just change uh, ppiu address here so ppiu chat is here and try to find uh, Phnom Penh International University map right and click share and bird map and copy the xml with the medium size okay and then paste it here okay so finish huh? now we have tables where you can display your data okay we have forms where you can collect your data like this and we have iframe uh, where you can attach uh, another uh, website on your website okay how we can use google maps uh, to display our university maps on the website on our website and so on this is uh, our uh, ppiu website so I will change the width to 100%. Okay. Right. right and so this that's all from my part and actually you can refer more coding on the uh, on the Google uh, forms from the w3 school website okay so this is all right that's all from my part thank you for your attention Maybe I will hand over to Miss Elma for the next for the next session. <laughs>
Uh, hi again, guys. Probably you're tired. Are you? <laughs> uh, since we still have time, probably you could have a short break. And then the last, uh, probably we could give them at least 10 minutes, sir. Is that okay? Okay. Could have a short uh, break. I just put here a, a timer and then we'll give you something to do um, before the end of the session. Thank you. Share a timer, sir. So if there are any question you can please feel, uh, you you can ask me directly from the chat or I think from oh, if you have questions right. Yeah. Probably we could display a timer or a clock. For 10 minutes, sir. So uh, they'll be aware of the time. How, how I can. <laughs> the time there, right? For 10 minutes. The timer. Ten minutes, right? Okay. Can have your short break now. Okay. <laughs>
come back okay time is up <laughs> all right um maybe we could give them already sir our task um can i share my screen Alright, so let me share again my screen. Okay, so we'll have two activities, but actually since uh, we're almost time, this will just be an assignment. So we have two activities. One is for an individual task, and the second one is for your uh, group collaboration. For your individual task, you just have to... Um, answer this question. So how could the internet and the World Wide Web help people in our society? In your case, if you're in the Philippines, so how would these things help in our society as well as in uh, people in Cambodia? Okay, So you will just be answering this and cite some examples on uh, the contribution or the benefits of internet and the World Wide Web in our society. As for the group task, so this is for the group task. So you need to collaborate with your team and finalize a proposal for a website uh, for an outreach activity or to a non-profit organization that shares uh, with less fortunate. Uh, if you remember uh, from the orientation, we mentioned that you're going to since this is a web design and development, it is expected of us that you will be designing a website. But our focus is for you to develop a website for a certain outreach program or activity, or you can choose a certain organization, probably a non-profit organization, that helps to the less fortunate or to the needy. So, for this activity, we want you to create wireframes or mockups. So you'll just be creating all pages for the five, for the website that you will be developing. We're not yet uh, expecting for you to design a very uh, beautiful design because we haven't discussed yet CSS. But based on what we have discussed, sir. Uh, Sale and I, uh, HTML, probably some of those you can already start using uh, those uh, ideas in your uh, outreach. But prior to that, of course, you need to first know um, what particular organization or activity are you going to make uh, a website for, okay? So you'll just be collaborating with your group mates. So the group mates that you're going to have is the same group, right, that they have last time. We won't be changing the groups already. Sir Sale. Ah, yes, we, uh, the collaborative task uh, depends to the group, okay? The group that we have assigned for the, uh, at the first class, at the first session. All right, so that we will be doing. Um, probably you could um, ask your group mates for their contact number, uh, not necessarily contact number because you're in international. You can get their, uh, do, do you have messen uh, do you have Facebook in your country, sir? Actually, there is, yeah, we have mm -hmm. Facebook, but actually in a group, a chat, they can uh, make video calls among themselves. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're using Google. You can yeah. use the Google uh, chat. Yeah, yeah. Google chat. Or you can also get their email or if, if it's up to you. It's up to your group if yeah, yeah. what uh, tool are you going to use to collaborate. 
for you to easily communicate. If, if you prefer Google Chat, that's good. If you prefer email, but um, we encourage you to use either Google Meet, Zoom, or probably Messenger or WhatsApp also in discussing because it's much better for you to discuss rather than just by typing and then asking questions through text because those have no uh, real emotions. And we want you to have a feel and talk really and communicate yeah. with your group mates so that uh, probably soon you will get to see each other. At least you have known uh, these people already. All right? So those. So again, this is the first individual task. How could you, how could internet and the triple W help people in our society? And also in line with that, you have to collaborate with your team. Okay, so create a final proposal for the site. Probably you just provide us with uh, a title and then a brief description and then start doing your wireframes and mockups. Okay, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Ma'am? Yes, Nat? Hello? Yes, Should the website be interactive? Like, uh, users can input their name and etc. Or should it be just something that they can see? Uh, probably for a, for a start, since we're not yet discussing script, JavaScript. So, you could start with a static page first. But we expect that at the end, it will dynamic or interactive okay thank you but we will be uh, providing you uh sir sale and i will be providing brick probably so that you will be guided but as for this activity we just want to know that uh, you've already tried to uh, come up with and focus yourself in one particular organization or a, an activity for an outreach so that you'll get to design the site according to that to that particular uh, organization or activity. All right. Other questions? You have other questions? None. And since we only have six minutes left, probably we'll just be. Uh, creating um, assignment links for you to submit your answers for this, uh, for the questions a while ago and for this task. Okay. Sir, do you want to add more? Uh, may I add more? Uh, there is a question, where should we submit the individual activity? How about the group task? When will be submission date? for both tasks, okay? So actually, for the second week, uh, that I check, that I share my screen. Uh, ah, yes. Actually, I have created uh, the second, second week uh, Google Classroom where you will where you can submit your collaborative task yeah okay for the individual and also group project okay? please submit both of them under this uh this tag okay collaborative task week two okay? this is the date for today 25th of august 22 okay so can we add an additional for the individual? Uh, yeah, they can submit both of them together. Individual. Ah, there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can submit. Uh, but for the collaborative, they could submit probably per group. Can we do that? So that they won't be having a hard time, both students will be submitting. Is that possible, sir? Okay, possible. And they, they, they can take the group project and submit it as in video door in uh, under which mean they have to submit two files first for the individual individual task and another one for the group project right so it's okay just just, okay. Co just copy from the group uh, actually when you finish doing the the the, 
the assignment you will have a copy one copy right per group so just take that copy and submit it as individual it's okay okay do you understand uh, regarding the question of Kyla, yes, uh, we will all. I will ask Sir Sale to upload the slide notes that we presented a while ago, as well as the samples that we have. Okay. I'll be sending it to him because he's the one to, to uh, upload it here. Yes. I will uh, upload. Is that the, okay, the, sir? I will upload the record, live record, also to to our second and also the recording session. of our session. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I think let's wrap it up if you still have questions. If you do not have any more questions, probably you can take a rest. And um, again, you communicate with your group mates through your Google chat for the meantime. But if you want to use another tool, you may do so. So it's your uh, prerogative. It's the group's prerogative. All right. All right. Once. There is one more thing. Okay. Yes. Let I share screen. Uh, there is an, there is one group called Group for All. Okay. Please uh please uh what we call add yourself to this group. Okay. Maybe you can ask your friend to add your your uh your to add you in this group. Group for All means. Is there uh, there will be uh, announcements for all for all for all students here okay maybe you can ask your friend yeah there there's a group space for your individual group uh, normally uh, the last week we we have created individual group but there is no group for all i mean all students must need to be in the one group and it will be easy for for doing announcement at one time okay all right that's good sir <laughs> okay if you have any other questions guys none all right so again you add yourselves to this group for all and then again collaborate in your individual group spaces and share files i can see that there is a link for sharing of files yes, yes. They can, uh, they for can do, the yes, they assignment can, of task yeah. they can do the group call also video call in this one. oh there they can also this is a very good tool already <laughs> you do not have to use any other tool anymore okay i hope you'll do that uh, you check on the availability of the time of the members of the group so you could collaborate even not only during our time every thursday i hope you could also do that in a separate time mm -hmm. so that you can uh, start doing the project okay and that is your first task because we will be assessing you at the end of this particular task all right no more questions okay probably if you have other questions you can chat also us here from this space yeah you can or you can email us if you are in the group for all you can write raise your question so i will be notified i will be noticed about the, the question yeah mm -hmm. but take note that this is for all for so all. everyone <laughs> can read the questions yeah, <laughs> right. if you want to have a private message you can chat us individually Okay. That's possible, right, sir? Yeah. All right. So uh, I think it's already 9.30. So I think we have a lot of learnings today. I hope uh, you'll get to implement that. And then we'll have more next meeting. All right. So thank you, guys. Have a good night. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you also. Thank you. Bye bye, teacher. Bye bye, take care. Okay. Bye, take care.
Goodbye, Ezra. Good night, sweet dream. <laughs>